All right. So I am ready to give this Blue Eye Red Geist with Elspeth deck another go. Um, I'm liking it so far. I like Elspeth, but I sometimes have trouble with the mana. Getting triple blue for Cryptic Command and double white for Elspeth Knight Errant, along with finding red for Lightning Bolt and Lightning Helix, uh, is, is not easy. It can be hard. Plus, we run a couple of double red sources in the sideboard. So the mana is the, the mana needs of the deck are pretty intensive. And I discussed this last time, but I wanted to try to go ahead and bring in a couple of Mystic Gates to make hitting these double whites and triple blues a little bit smoother. The other thing I want to do is test the viability or the correctness, maybe is, is a better way to put it, of four cryptic commands. Um, I know a lot of lists from three, and I'm trying to decide what the right number for this deck is. I think if I'm going to go about asking that question, I need to ask myself, you know, what do I want to be doing on turn four or five? Do I think I want to be casting cryptic command? And I think in most situations, the answer is probably. I think even if you have a Geist in hand or an Elspeth, if you're also looking at a Cryptic Command, depending on what your opponent's doing, you may be fine to just hold that card and be like, no, no, no. First, I'm going to deny you the opportunity to play this awesome spell. Then I'm going to replace that card, that Cryptic Command, and then I'm going to play my Geist or my, or my Elspeth. So I think the deck probably wants to be casting a Cryptic Command on turn, turn 4 or 5 most of the time or pretty reliably. So I want to look at a hypergeometric distribution calculator to help me make that decision. So let's go do that. Um, I have one up here with the numbers plugged in, and let me explain them. So population size is the size of the deck. And the number of successes in population is, in this case, the number of cryptic commands that we have in there. Um, sample size is the number of cards that we've seen. So if we go with seven for our opening and then go with you know one card per turn so we go seven eight nine ten eleven twelve well most of the time unless we cast a reman which our odds would just go up most of the time if we're just car drawing cards naturally we're going to see 12 by turn five so that's that's what that number is and what we want to find out is what is the probability that we're going to see one or more of our successes in that sample size. Well, in this case, the probability is 60%. Move our decimal over two places. So that's a little bit more than half. And I think that's pretty good. Um, we can play with the numbers a bit. For example, let's say that the card we cast on turn two was Reman, so we saw an extra card. So if we're looking at 13 cards, that probability goes up to 63%. Okay, good. So let's set this back to 12. But let's look at what if we only had three cryptic commands in the deck? Well, now our number's a little bit less than half, and that doesn't sound right to me. I think most of the time, when we've seen 12 cards, we'd like our probability to see one or more cryptic commands um, be a little bit over half, or a little bit more on the cons consistent side. Um, so because of this, my, or rather based on just this information, what I would like to do is keep running with the four cryptic commands. However, you know, this isn't going to tell you about all the times that you might draw too many, you know, and, you know, you might have a cryptic command, two or three crypto, cryptic commands coming up your hand. So I think that this serves as a good foundation to start testing. But I think that you can, you know, if, you, if you're diligent and you go and do a bunch of testing and try to record those results and, and, and understand, you know, how the deck's actually playing, it might give you a better idea of where you want that number to actually be. So that's where we're at, and uh, that's why I'm going to continue testing the four cryptic commands for now. And like I've said before, I still don't know if that's right. Um, I'm not sure what I want to replace the card with if I do take one out, maybe an Electrolyze. Um, Electrolyze doesn't seem like it's as powerful as cryptic command on the surface, but when you're using Electrolyze to its full potential and two for one in your opponent while drawing yourself a card, I think that it's probably one of the most powerful things that this deck can be doing. So Electrolyze is a, is a possibility. Um, possibly moving the Batter Skull to the main, uh, maybe even something like Baneslayer Angel. I'm not sure yet, but for the purposes of this video, uh, we're going to continue uh, with the configuration as we had it last time while bringing in the two Mystic Gates in place of Glacial Fortress and Sulphur Falls. 
So let's go to the constructed queues on Magic Online. Uh, there's nobody in a modern queue yet, so we'll go ahead and pay our two tickets, select our Geist Elspeth deck, and wait for somebody to queue up. We have our two man fired here. Oh, Ray Future Pro. <laughs> so I've heard this guy, I've listened to this guy a few different times on Brainstorm Brewery, and uh, I've had a couple of Twitter exchanges with him, so that's cool. I'm looking forward to... Uh, to doing some battle here. All right, <clears throat> so Geist of St. Traft, uh, two mana sources, uh, three mana sources rather. I think this is okay. Um, we have a white source. We're probably going to get a Steam Vents with the Scalding Tarn just so we collect more blue towards Cryptic Command. Um, we do not have any Counter Magic, which is unfortunate, but we're not gonna mulligan this hand. All right, let's see what Mr. Ray Future Pro is playing. I remember listening to him on the podcast, and he was pretty excited about Merfolk, but I know at the Pro Tour he ended up playing something else. So he's down to five cards. Mulligan's to four cards. Th oh, three cards? That's no fun for anyone. All right, well, that sucks. Uh, I, I'm not even going to sideboard. I didn't see him do anything. All right, he submitted a deck. I submitted a deck. Uh, okay, here we go. Let me turn off the sound there. All right, so I'm sure he's going to play. Let's see. Tech Edge. Ugh. We have two cards that need red and no red source. It's possible <laughs> I'm going to tell him something really quick. All right, so I don't, I don't think we can keep this. It's possible that we could draw into a red source, but it's also possible that, I mean, we have eight fetches, a mountain, a uh, sacred foundry that's 10 cards. I mean, <laughs> he says it's going to be a boring video. Well, I think we have to mulligan. Uh, we're going to mulligan. Uh, okay, this is not good either, but... I mean, <laughs> this is pretty bad, actually. I don't really know how we win with this hand. Maybe we get really lucky and beat him with the Snapcaster, <laughs> beat him to death with Snapcaster Mages. Uh, let me think. We have guys. We we can play Remand. We can play all of our creatures. This hand sucks, but I'm worried about going down to five and having something worse. We can play the stuff we have, and it's not great, but we're going to go for it. And we won the first game and a decisive victory, so... We're not going to mulligan to five. And we're on the draw, too. So just F16, passing priority the whole time. <clears throat> All right. Green card. Uh-oh. It's probably pod. So uh, we will play an island, F6. All right, <laughs> another birds. <laughs> All the birds. All of the birds. Um, I, there's really no benefit to play another Mystic Gate. We need cards, so we'll, we're, prob we're probably just going to remand whatever he does, I guess. 
I mean, if he plays a bird, I'm still going to remand it. <laughs> I don't even care. Remand forever. <clears throat> Dum -dum -dum. All right. Orzov Pontiff. Um, I mean, I can't think of when he enters the battlefield. Oh, yeah, I guess to choose one. I don't know why I wouldn't remand it, considering I don't have a lot going on here. More mana. Okay. Helix is all right. So I guess if he replays the Pontiff, uh, when it enters the battlefield or dies, and as many as battlefields, the creature it haunts dies, choose one creature as you control. So I guess we'll probably just untap at the end of his turn and kill it. He's going to. Can he plus one his dudes and smack him with the birds? Yeah. All right, we're going to sack this for steam vents. And he looks as pontiff. Okay, so now we have um, Snapcaster, Remand, and Snapcaster, um, Lightning Helix, play Mystic Gate, and pass. Haunting works. So I guess since this thing is haunted, does it do the same thing as Orzov Pontiff when it dies? I, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I guess we kill a bird. We have plenty of Snapcaster mages. So we'll just do it now. Um, we'll make double blue with this. Cast a Snapcaster Mage. Get back Lightning Helix. Guess we should have done this at Declare Attackers, not Combat. Um, that was strange. Why did I not get? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Can't block. Um, Geist is pretty all right. However, he's got one card in hand. I don't think it's a birthing pod. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get in with Snapcaster Mage, play a Geist, and hope that that gets us there. Um, play his team vents. Blue white, pay white. Blue Geist has the turn. <clears throat> oh, look, a birthing pod. So that's probably not so good. Maybe I should have played around that. Okay, yeah, so that's that is what haunting does. It kills my snapcaster mage. So I guess this is voice of resurgence. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, this isn't too good. We have a crap hand, and we don't have anything interesting to snap back. We don't have any way to get rid of this voice of resurgence. Um, not so good. I think we're just going to... I mean, if we attack and he blocks, he gets the token and he goes to 10. Um, that What is he? I guess that, that keeps him off of potting into kitchen, sphin kitchen finks. Or maybe he just doesn't block. I mean, we don't really have a way to deal with anything, so I think I'm okay with this. What does he have a three? It's Kitchen Finks and I do not remember. So if we happen to draw a burn spell, we can go burn, snap, burn for six. Um, let us see. What is he doing? Is this another voice? Did they get anything else at two? No, they don't. All right, I want to get rid of this fetch land. Going to play something. That sucks. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn, so we'd give him two tokens, which would be awful. Um, <laughs> we're just, there's really not, I don't think there's a way that we can win. If we let this resolve, we can't get rid of it without him getting back guys. Um, we're just in a bad position. I mean, I guess we let it resolve, otherwise we don't. He has even more power on the board. I mean, yeah. Tech Edge? Yee. So, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and concede. I really don't think there's a way that we can win now. Um, I mean, like even if we start drawing cryptic commands, those are gonna, we can tap his guys and buy ourselves a little bit of time. Um, but next turn, it's just, there's just not, we are too far behind pod to, to win this game. So I'm gonna speed it up and just concede. I don't see how we're going to make that happen. He's going to... As soon as he untaps... We don't have a burn spell. As soon as he untaps, he can pot away voice of resurgence into Kitchen Finks to gain life, which is going to make put us even further behind as far as burning him out goes. I don't think it's going to happen. Pod's already such a difficult matchup. Okay, so we're going to bring in Relic of Progenitus. We're going to bring in Anger of the Gods. Wear Tear... Um, these games usually get long and grindy. I think Batter Scrolls okay. Engineered Explosives. Um, do I want Stony Silence? Let's see. This is a lot of cards. We have seven potential cards to bring in. Um, I do think it's worth it to try to blow up a pod. I do think Relic can be um difficult for him because of his persist guys. I think anger is great. Um, I 
I think engineered explosives, if we draw it early, could be good on one. And let's see, do I want batter skull more than stony silence? Well, let's see. What are we going to take out? We're definitely going to take out four geist. This has he's so many guys. Um, is spell snare bad? What does spell snare hit? Spell no, nah, spell snare hits voice. It hits Melira. Uh, maybe we want to leave that in. Path is good. I don't think lightning helix is as good against Pod. It just doesn't deal with their persist creatures very well. Um, oh wait a second. So I'm just noticing this, but this is not the exact deck that we were running before. This has an Electrolyze in place of the th fourth Cryptic Command. I guess I must have saved that inadvertently before. Um, so I guess Electrolyze, what I let's see here. I guess I'm, I think I'm taking out the Helix. I'm leaving the Electrolyze in the event that he plays like a double bird again or something like that and it can two for one him. All right, we're gonna run with that. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, we'll play first. Uh, okay, so we have an Anger of the Gods. We have a way to get double red. That's good. Um, I think this hand's worth keeping. We don't have a... <laughs> um, we don't, we do not have like a like a lightning bolt to keep him off an early pod by killing his mana ramp dude, but we're not going to mulligan this. Let's see if we're going to go ahead and play... I'm going to play Arid Mesa, probably get into Steam Vents. Bird? Yes, Bird. All right. Drawing like a mana leak would be pretty all right. Stony Silence isn't bad. I think we want to play that. Um, yeah. We're going to go ahead and make double white, pay a blue. Stony Silence, pass the turn. It's only good if he has a pot. If he's on the beatdown plan, that doesn't really do a whole lot for us. But it's a play. It's a thing. We also have Anger coming up, so that's cool too. Voice. No, it doesn't have white. So something else. Sin Collector. You are... <laughs> I hate you right now. I need that Anger of Gods. Don't take it, Ray Future Pro. Don't take my Anger of the Gods. I want that card. He's going to take the Anger of the Gods. So sad. No, that was all my plan. Um, yeah, we're gonna take damage and click at his draw step. Oh, wait, we're doing this incorrectly. Make double blue, pay a blue. Pay a blue. Target Ray Future Pro. Let's see what he has. He's got lots of things. Man, that's bad for us. Um, he, yeah, he has the extra mana source. God, he also has Ranger of Eels. I mean, I guess that's, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't have anything to get back with it yet. There's no reason for him to play it yet. And he's some man away from it, but he's got a voice. He's got Kitchen Finks. Um, we have two paths. He has a Finks and a Voice of Resurgence. He also has a Spell Skite. I think we probably need to get rid of the Spell Skite, unfortunately. It just makes all of our removal spells 
it eats a path. So, like, if we get rid of a Kitchen Sphinx, if he didn't have a Spell Sky, we could get rid of a Kitchen Sphinx and we'd have a path for, like, the Sphinx and the Voice. Um, but if we don't, then we're not going to... I mean, one. he has three creatures we need to get rid of. We have two paths. He's going to have an extra one. One of them needs to eat a path. If he really let him resolve a Spell Sky, it's just going to eat the path. So we'll get rid of that. We can get rid of two of those. Maybe we'll get another answer. And unless he does get a draw a way to deal with Vendillion Click, we will begin beating him about the face with it as much as we can. Exalted Gross. Okay, remand. Um, and this is where Mystic Gate sucks because we can't path and hold up. Um, remand. I mean, I'd much rather just. I think I'm just going to attack and remand his um, Kitchen Finks or whatever he tries to play next. Right now we're both hitting each other for three, although that's about to change. So good. All right, so we're going to create two whites, activate, and path here. And path here. Stop. Is it going to leave the bird back? Probably. No, I'm at eight. He's not. Okay, so we can get rid of one of the kitchen finks. Let's see. But he's going to. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think, I mean, I, I we're basically dead. I mean, I guess we need to hold back to block. He is going to make all of his guys bigger, but if we if we don't if we don't hang back to block, then we die. Um, make a blue and a white, blue, uh, and blue, snapcaster mage using blue mana, get back a path, and cast the path on one of these guys, and pass the turn.
I think I'm just going to block with the Snapcaster Mage. I mean, we won't... I can't even trade with the Vendillion Click because he can just pump with Gavany in response and it'll live. So I guess we can path another kitchen things. So rather than have him reset Kitchen Finks, I think now we want to do uh, this, load another blue, Snapcaster Mage using the blue. Targeting path. So he just sacks in response. But I mean we're we're just really dead. So now he just I guess gets to pump next turn and we can't kill anything with blocks. <laughs> and he gets to play another kitchen things. I mean, this is really just, oh, is this a, yeah, a chord. Okay, so We're going to go ahead and concede. I mean, we are in an unwinnable situation. All right, so those didn't go so well. It's very possible I could have made some play mistakes that I'm not recognizing now. I have to go back and watch the video. So, speaking of play mistakes, I think our first one was keeping the six card hand in the second game. Um, I kept a reman, three snapcaster mages, and lands, and I don't think there is a deck in the modern format that that hand can win against. And if I'm keeping a hand that has no chance to win against any decks, it's probably one that I should mulligan. So I think that was the big problem there. Um, in game three, we we didn't draw in an ideal way. Um, we did get a stony silence, which seemed great, but then we got another one. He didn't end up playing a pod, and we did stumble to three lands. That being said, um, it might be that there is some play mistakes uh, in that match, but it looked like he drew pretty well, we drew pretty bad, and it's most likely a game that we were going to lose that we couldn't have gotten ourselves out of. But, you know, that's magic that happens. I think uh, overall with the match, assuming we kept a better hand in game two, maybe we win that game. Um, and, well, he did just kind of concede game one, but... Let's say that he won game one, you know, mulliganing and keeping a hand that has a potential to win versus a hand that won't win would have set us up 
to have a better game th- game three. So I guess the lessons there are the main one is don't keep hands that you know can't win. All right, so let's give another round a try. <laughs> 